The city loomed ahead, a chaotic mosaic of towering buildings and bustling streets that overwhelmed Melanie's senses. She clutched a small bag containing essentials and her grandmother's favorite violets as she navigated through the crowded sidewalk toward the hospital. As she entered the sterile confines of the medical facility, anxiety gripped her. The unfamiliar faces and antiseptic scent intensified her feeling of displacement. The receptionist guided her to Tabitha's room, where her grandmother lay, pale and frail, surrounded by the hum of medical machinery. Melanie hesitated at the door, gathering the courage to face the reality of her grandmother's condition. Tabitha's eyes brightened as she saw her granddaughter, a mix of recognition and joy. Melanie, my dear, you made it. Tabitha's voice, though weak, held a warmth that eased Melanie's apprehension. She rushed to her grandmother's side, the violets clutched tightly in her hand. I brought these for you, Grandma, Melanie said presenting the violets. They're from our garden back home. I thought they might bring a bit of familiar comfort. Tabitha's eyes glistened with gratitude. Oh, my sweet girl, you always know how to brighten my day. Come, sit with me. Tell me about your journey. As Melanie settled into a chair beside the hospital bed, she recounted the challenges of moving from their serene village to the chaotic city. Tabitha listened intently, her love and pride for her granddaughter evident in her gaze. You're so brave, Melanie, Tabitha whispered, reaching for her granddaughter's hand. This is a new beginning for both of us, and I'm grateful you're here. The room fell into a comfortable silence, broken only by the soft hum of medical equipment. Melanie felt a mix of emotions, fear, hope, and the weight of responsibility. Little did she know that this moment marked the start of a journey that would not only reshape her life, but also impact the lives of those around her. After the emotionally charged reunion with her grandmother, Melanie stepped out of Tabitha's hospital room into the sterile hallway. The reality of the bustling city outside the hospital doors felt overwhelming, and Melanie's uncertainty grew with every step. Vivian, Melanie's neighbor in the apartment complex, happened to be passing by. She noticed Melanie's furrowed brow and approached with a friendly smile. Hey there, you look like you could use a friend. Are you okay? Melanie hesitated for a moment, unsure whether to confide in this stranger. But there was a genuine kindness in Vivian's eyes that put her at ease. I'm Melanie, Tabitha's granddaughter. I just moved here from a village, and everything is so different. Vivian's expression softened with understanding. Melanie, welcome to the city. It can be overwhelming at first, but you'll find your way. Why don't you come to my apartment for a bit? We can chat, and I can offer you some tea. Grateful for the unexpected offer, Melanie followed Vivian to her apartment. The cozy space provided a stark contrast to the hospital environment. Vivian poured two cups of tea, and they settled into comfortable chairs. So, Melanie, what brings you to the city? Vivian inquired, sipping her tea. Melanie sighed, opening up about her grandmother's illness and the decision to move closer for support. It's just a lot to take in, you know, I want to be there for grandma, but the city feels so different from home. Vivian nodded empathetically. Change can be tough, especially when it's all happening at once. But you're not alone. If you ever need someone to talk to or a place to stay, my door is always open. Touched by Vivian's genuine kindness, Melanie felt a sense of comfort. Thank you, Vivian. That means a lot to me. I never expected to find such warmth in this big city. Vivian smiled. Sometimes, the city surprises you. We're neighbors now, and neighbors look out for each other. Now, tell me more about your grandmother and the violets you brought. As Melanie shared stories of her grandmother and their shared love for gardening, the bond between the two women began to deepen, laying the foundation for a friendship that would prove crucial in the days to come. Melanie spent the night in Vivian's comforting apartment, a respite from the hospital's sterile surroundings. The following morning, she awoke to the gentle sunlight streaming through the windows, casting a warm glow on the violets she had brought from her grandmother's garden. 
Vivian joined Melanie in the small kitchen, a curious expression on her face. Good morning, Melanie. I couldn't help but notice those violets. They're exquisite. Did you do something special to them? Melanie smiled, a mixture of pride and mystery in her eyes. Well, they have a mind of their own. Back home, my grandmother and I believed in talking to our plants. It sounds silly, but it makes a difference. They respond to care and affection. Vivian chuckled, charmed by the quaint tradition. Talking to plants, huh? I've never tried that. What did you say to them? Melanie approached the violets on the windowsill, her fingers gently caressing the delicate petals. I just whispered words of love and encouragement, like I used to back home. Watch this. As Melanie softly spoke to the violets, the atmosphere in the room seemed to change. Vivian observed with wide-eyed fascination as the closed buds gradually unfurled, revealing a spectrum of violet hues. The transformation was both enchanting and inexplicable. Vivian gasped, I can't believe my eyes. How did you do that? Melanie shrugged modestly. It's a connection, a shared energy. They respond to the positive vibes and affection. It's a little piece of magic my grandmother taught me. Vivian marveled at the blooming violets, a newfound respect for nature's mysteries taking root in her heart. Well, Melanie, you've just made a believer out of me. Those violets are like little miracles. The two women shared a moment of silent appreciation for the beauty unfolding before them. As they continued to chat, Melanie couldn't shake the feeling that the violet's response was a sign of positive things to come in this new chapter of her life in the city. Little did she know that her unique connection with nature would play a crucial role in the days ahead. Emboldened by the small miracle of the blooming violets, Melanie ventured into the city's vibrant market the next day, determined to find something special for her ailing grandmother. The market was a kaleidoscope of colors and scents, and Melanie navigated through the stalls, seeking an elusive connection that echoed her intuitive journey. At a quaint fruit stand, she noticed a display of apples, their rich colors and enticing aroma drawing her in. The market vendor, a middle-aged man with a kind smile, greeted her warmly. Good day, miss. What can I get you today? Melanie surveyed the apples thoughtfully, her intuition guiding her choice. I'll take those, she said, pointing to a particular batch. They're special. They grow where there is love. The vendor raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Love, you say? Well, they're fine apples, indeed. But it's not every day someone talks about love and fruit. What's your secret, miss? Melanie chuckled, a twinkle in her eye. No secret, just a feeling. My grandmother always said that the best things grow where there's love, and I believe her. The vendor smiled knowingly, packing the apples with care. Your grandmother sounds like a wise woman. May these apples bring the same love wherever they go. With the bag of special apples in hand, Melanie felt a renewed sense of purpose. As she made her way back to the hospital, she pondered the mysterious connection between love and nature. Arriving at Tabitha's bedside, Melanie greeted her grandmother with a warm smile. Grandma, I brought you something special. Tabitha's eyes lit up as Melanie presented the bag of apples. Oh my dear, they're beautiful. Where did you find such lovely fruits? Melanie sat beside her grandmother, explaining the encounter at the market and the significance of the apples. They say they grow where there is love, and I thought, what better place to find love than right here with you? Touched by Melanie's gesture, Tabitha embraced her granddaughter. You have a heart full of love, Melanie. These apples are a testament to that. Thank you, my sweet girl. As the two shared a quiet moment, Little did they know that these apples would become a symbol of love and healing, setting in motion a chain of events that would bring unexpected miracles to those within the hospital walls. The hospital room, adorned with the fragrance of fresh violets and the vibrant colors of the special apples, became a haven of warmth and hope. Melanie, holding the bag of apples, approached her grandmother's bedside with a determined yet gentle spirit. Grandma. Melanie said, her eyes filled with a mixture of concern and love. 
I brought you something special. These apples, they grow where there is love. I thought they might bring a little more of that into this room. Tabitha's eyes sparkled with appreciation as Melanie handed her the bag. Oh, Melanie, you always know how to brighten my day. What a thoughtful gesture. But remember, my dear, the love you bring is more precious than any fruit. As Tabitha examined the apples, a soft voice came from the adjacent bed. Teresa, the frail woman who had been silent for days, looked at Melanie with a faint smile. Those apples look like they hold magic. Do you mind sharing a little of that magic with me? Melanie, sensing a connection beyond words, approached Teresa with a warm smile. Of course, these apples are meant to be shared. I hope they bring a touch of magic to your day too. Teresa took an apple from the bag, holding it with fragile hands. Thank you, dear. Sometimes, a simple gesture can mean the world. As Melanie spent time with her grandmother and Teresa, the room filled with a sense of serenity. The sweet aroma of apples mingled with the gentle hum of medical equipment, creating a cocoon of comfort in an otherwise clinical setting. Helen, the elderly woman in the next bed, observed the scene with curiosity. What's all this fuss about special apples? she asked her eyes twinkling with amusement. Melanie, always ready to share her newfound wisdom, approached Helen. These apples are more than just fruit. They're a symbol of love and hope. I believe they have a special kind of magic. Helen chuckled, reaching out to take one of the apples. Well, I could use a bit of magic in my life. Let's see what these apples can do. Little did they know that Melanie's gesture of kindness would set in motion a series of events that would defy explanation, bringing unexpected healing and miracles to the hospital ward. The room, once filled with uncertainty, now hummed with the quiet power of love and shared moments of connection. The hospital ward, shrouded in the hush of night, bore witness to a quiet miracle. Melanie, Helen, and Teresa had retired to their beds, each cradling the hope that the special apples might bring a touch of magic to their lives. As dawn painted the sky in hues of pink and gold, the hospital staff entered the ward with a mix of bewilderment and astonishment. The once dire situation had transformed overnight. Teresa, who had been frail and fading, now sat up in bed, a vitality in her eyes that hadn't been there before. The attending nurse, Maria, stared in disbelief. Teresa, this is incredible. What happened? Teresa, her face radiant with a newfound energy, pointed to the bag of apples by her bedside. Melody brought these special apples, and I believe they worked their magic. I feel stronger, more alive. Maria exchanged incredulous glances with her colleagues. Magic apples, you say? Well, I've seen my fair share of miracles, but this? In the adjacent bed, Helen, who had been a silent observer of Teresa's transformation, sat up with a twinkle in her eyes. I must admit, those apples might have a trick or two up their sleeves. Melanie, dear, did you sneak some fairy dust in there? Melanie laughed, a musical sound that echoed through the room. No fairy dust, just a little bit of love and belief. Nature has its ways, and sometimes, all it takes is a simple gesture to unlock its wonders. The news of Teresa's overnight improvement spread like wildfire through the hospital, reaching the ears of Dr. Rodriguez, the head physician. He entered the ward, a mix of skepticism and curiosity on his face. Good morning, everyone. I hear we've had a bit of a miracle here. Dr. Rodriguez inquired, his eyes scanning the room. Teresa, now sitting at the edge of her bed, nodded with a grateful smile. It's the apples, doctor. Melanie brought them, and something extraordinary happened. I feel better than I have in months. Dr. Rodriguez, though intrigued, maintained a professional demeanor. Well, Teresa, we'll need to run some tests to understand this sudden improvement, but I must say, it's quite remarkable. As the medical team conducted tests and assessments, the hospital ward buzzed with a renewed sense of hope. Melanie's simple act of kindness, symbolized by the special apples, had catalyzed a change that defied explanation. 
The news of the overnight miracle reached Tabitha's room, and Melanie couldn't wait to share the astonishing events with her grandmother. Little did they know that the positive ripple effects of Melanie's gestures were far from over, and the magic of love and belief would continue to weave its spell on the lives within the hospital walls. News of Teresa's unexpected recovery spread throughout the hospital like wildfire, creating an undercurrent of optimism among both patients and staff. The once skeptical medical team found themselves grappling with the inexplicable, and the atmosphere in the ward had transformed into an enclave of wonder. In the hospital lounge, nurses and doctors gathered, discussing the unprecedented events that had unfolded overnight. I've never seen anything like it, Nurse Ramirez exclaimed, shaking her head in disbelief. Teresa's vitals have improved dramatically, and there's no medical explanation for it. It's like something out of a storybook. Dr. Rodriguez, the head physician, joined the conversation, his analytical mind grappling with the inexplicable. We need to approach this cautiously. While we celebrate Teresa's recovery, we must remain vigilant and continue monitoring her progress. It's our duty to seek scientific explanations for these events. Meanwhile, in Tabitha's room, Melanie shared the news of Teresa's improvement with her grandmother. The room infused with a newfound sense of hope. Grandma, something incredible happened. Teresa, in the next bed, she's doing so much better. The doctors are baffled, Melanie exclaimed, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Tabitha, her eyes reflecting a mixture of joy and wonder, squeezed Melanie's hand. My dear, miracles happen when we least expect them. Your kindness and the love you bring seem to have set something extraordinary in motion. Back in the ward, Teresa, now seated by the windowsill, couldn't help but overhear the buzz of conversations. Helen, her roommate, joined her, a mischievous glint in her eyes. Seems like those apples of yours are causing quite the stir, Melanie, Helen remarked, a playful smile dancing on her lips. Melanie chuckled. Who would have thought? I just wanted to bring a little joy and comfort. The rest seems to have a magic of its own. Helen nodded, her gaze fixed on the bag of apples. Well, you've certainly sprinkled some magic dust in this ward. I haven't seen this much positivity in a long time. As the day unfolded, the positive ripples continued to touch the lives of those in the hospital. Patients who had felt the weight of despair began to share stories of renewed hope, and the once-muted corridors echoed with laughter and optimism. In the hospital lounge, Dr. Rodriguez contemplated the unfolding events. It's a testament to the power of positivity and belief. We may not understand it fully, but perhaps there's more to healing than what could be measured with medical instruments. The chapter ended with the promise of a new dawn, where the magic of Melanie's gestures had set in motion a chain of events that transcended the boundaries of science, leaving the hospital ward bathed in the light of newfound hope and possibility. The hospital ward, once shrouded in uncertainty, now radiated with a palpable sense of hope and renewal. Teresa's recovery, inexplicable to the medical team, had become a beacon of possibility for everyone within those sterile walls. Melanie, fueled by the positive energy she had inadvertently unleashed, continued her routine visits to the hospital. The bag of special apples, once a simple gesture of love, had become a symbol of newfound miracles. As Melanie entered the ward, she was greeted by smiling faces and words of gratitude from patients and staff alike. The atmosphere had transformed into a celebration of life, where the boundaries between science and the inexplicable blurred. Helen, now sitting up in her bed with a newfound vigor, beckoned Melanie over. You've brought a bit of magic into this place, dear. I never thought I'd see the day when hospital corridors echoed with laughter instead of sighs. Melanie smiled, her heart warmed by the positive transformations around her. It's amazing what a little love and belief can do. I'm just glad to see everyone feeling better. In a quiet corner of the ward, Vivian approached Melanie with a curious glint in her eyes. Melanie, there's something extraordinary happening here. The energy is different, 
and people seem to be healing not just physically but emotionally too. Melanie nodded, grateful for Vivian's keen observation. It's like the whole atmosphere has shifted. Maybe, just maybe, there's a connection between our actions and the world around us. In the midst of the positive changes, Tabitha's health had also shown signs of improvement. Dr. Rodriguez, though still puzzled by the inexplicable events, couldn't deny the positive impact on his patients. Tabitha, your granddaughter seems to have brought a wave of positivity into this ward. Whatever she's doing, it's working, Dr. Rodriguez admitted, a rare smile gracing his face. Tabitha, surrounded by the love and care of those around her, looked at Melanie with eyes filled with pride. You've turned this hospital stay into a journey of healing, my dear, I couldn't be prouder. As the days passed, the hospital became a place of newfound connections and shared joy. Patients who had been strangers now formed a support system, their stories intertwined by the common thread of unexpected healing. The chapter concluded with Melanie standing by the windowsill, gazing at the blooming violets and the bag of special apples. Little did she know that her journey, marked by kindness and belief, had created a tapestry of new beginnings for everyone in the hospital, proving that sometimes, the most profound transformations start with a simple act of love.